up, Michael. Hey, Dad. How are you? Good. You out in the park? Oh, yes. Just like every Wednesday morning. Can I join you? I think I can now. Fit you into my busy schedule. Okay. I'll be there in 15. <laughs> See you soon. Good morning, sir. Good morning, son. Seems I've caught you when you're busy. I can always make time for my one and only son. I'm honoured. I'm not keeping you from your work, am I? No, I had a few cancellations this morning. So I thought I'd come and see the oldest person I know. Your timing is impeccable. How do you mean? Well, the oldest person you know is planning a sightseeing tour today. Seeing as my limo driver has taken the day off, your car will do. Is this one of your infamous tours of the city? <laughs> you know it. I've only got till lunchtime. That's more than enough time. You ready? You know what this is? No apartments? Hmm. This is the site of the first factory that I worked in when I arrived. The old textile mill. I had to walk 40 minutes to work and 40 minutes home again. Every day. Hang on. Is this the when I was a lad speech? It must be at least what? Five minutes since I last heard it. It's good for you to know how things was back then. I didn't have a car. I didn't have fancy clothes. <laughs> I worked every hour that I could find and still barely made a, a, enough money to live on. You know, things were hard. <laughs> you don't know how good you have it. I appreciate how good I've got it. I know things were different back then. Different? That's an understatement. <laughs> you know, the first time I saw smoke coming out of our building was here. <laughs> we didn't have that back in Jamaica. <laughs> and it was cold. <laughs> so cold. <laughs> and I remember saying to somebody, um, when does summer arrive? They said, it's July. You're in it. <laughs> 1971. Just in time. Because... In 1971, the Immigration Act came in. You were one of the last ones to make it here. You belong to the Windrush generation. You say it to me every time, Dad. You do pay attention. <laughs> Do you know that my generation is not the first generation of West Indians to be involved in the textile mills? What do you mean? Maybe we'll save that for another time. 1971. So, you know where we're going next? This was our first official house, your mother and I. It was like a palace for us, you know? Our own little paradise that we didn't have to share with anyone. Were you the only black people on the estate? Oh, yes. Stood out like a sore thumb. And you know, when you're young and as good looking as I am, trouble seemed to have a way of finding you. But our neighbours, the Ramsdens, 
Yes, the Ramsdens. We cooked each other meals. They looked out for us. They made us feel welcome. I didn't feel that at the beginning when I first came, but they, they made the difference. Sometimes wonder if much has changed since then. Oh yes, sir. A lot has changed. More than you'll ever know. I mean, look at this place. Eh? I can't believe how much this place has changed. Over there. That was the Abbey National Building and it rose so high in the sky as far as the eye can see. Yeah, I remember it. Wasn't <laughs> it like 12 stories high? Exactly, <laughs> yes. And over there, the buses from Moore Avenue and Queensbury used to come through here and round here and right here. I, I used to get my uh, bus to the Taekwondo class from over ah, there. Ah, yes. <laughs> you learned how to defend yourself. I'm proud of you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> proud of you, son. Proud of you. But right here, this was the fountain outside the courthouse. A lot of social history went on around here. I think I have some pictures. Yes. Hey, do you remember when we came and watched the World Cup on the big screen? Well, of course. <laughs> and the tennis. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, for an old man, your memory's still pretty good. Hey, I never lost it up here. You're smart too. You get that from me. I've got some good news, Dad. You're giving me a grandson. Ah, not yet. I got the job. You're now looking at the Cultural Services Director for Bradford District. Well, that's a fancy title. What does that entail? In a nutshell, it means I'm in charge of shining a light on all that is wonderful about Bradford to the rest of the UK, Europe and the world. Now, I'm just, you know, drawing people into the city. You should um, employ me as your assistant. <laughs> I've been singing the praises of this city for decades. Yes. Congratulations, son. Well done. I hope they recognize your talent. You should be taking over the council soon. Nah, not this year. I'm over next year. Eh? <laughs> mm. You ready to go see your mother? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Nice. Undercliff Cemetery. So much history here. So much. I just love walking through this place. This is where I come to find peace and quiet. I've got to be honest, Dad. When I used to walk to school, I know you told me not to cut through here, but I did, every day. <laughs> I knew, I knew. Your father had eyes everywhere. I just didn't want you messing about, that's all. There's something I wanted to say. I, I know you have to get back to work, but um, I just wanted to say that it's important that you don't forget where you're from. Bradford. <laughs> yes, Bradford. We're all Bradford. Like in this cemetery, there's big money people and big hearted people. You big money people, some of them, they made their money from the mills and the factories or some from the plantations in the West Indies. 
but your big hearted people, they fight for social change. They welcome people like Pablo Fank, Britain's first black circus owner. He raised money for Bradford Infirmary, for widows, for orphans. Bradford loved him so much, they call him Brother Pablo. The big hearted people, they welcome people like the Fisk Jubilee Sings, who performed at St. George's Hall. They brought gospel music from America and sang for the first time songs like Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. <laughs> you see, it makes me proud when that song is sung in the rugby stadium, because that history belongs to all of us. When I came here, there were people who before me made sacrifices so that I could be here and so that you could be here too. We stand on their shoulders and we mustn't forget that. I know you young people like your fancy phones. So when you get some time, if you could do some reading up on some of this history and do some research into the Windrush generation for your fancy new job. Would you do that for me? Yeah. Yeah? Of course, Dad. All right. Yeah. Of course. You know, I always wondered, did you ever think about going back to Jamaica? No. No. Well, you was settled in school. Your mother and I, we made friends. We set down roots. We were happy. In fact, we fell in love with the place. It's amazing how somewhere special like this can make you feel at home. You know, over the decades, I have more than a few friends buried here now. I still miss you, you know. Sometimes, if I think about it too much, Fifty years ago, I traveled halfway across the world to try and make something of my life. So every now and then, I ask myself, what have I done? What have I achieved? What legacy will Clive Robertson leave behind? Before your mother passed away, she and I talked. And we both agreed that you remain our best achievement. I know you might be thinking that, well, she's not here to tell you that. But people die, but they remain with you. So never forget how proud of you me and your mother are. Never forget that.
Hey, Jerry. Hi, Michael. Can't wait for you to get started. I just wondered, if you had time later this afternoon, could you jump on a quick Zoom call with Sharon Griffiths from the Heritage Office? We want to see how we can bring a bit of Bradford's history and heritage into our provision moving forward. Are you OK with that? Of course. I've got a few ideas of my own to add to the mix, if that's all right. <laughs>